What's up YouTube? I'm Josh Newland from Newland Performance. In this video, I'm gonna explain how to choose and commit to the right school for you. All right, so like I've addressed in other videos, I think when you start talking to school, you should make a really big list and then just pick a few criteria that's something you would never I compromise on like you're 100% sure about. For me, that was it had to be a four-year university, had to be fairly close to home and I chose specific states, and they had to have my major. So I suggest making, you know, three or four factors that you're 100% sure about to make an initial list of schools that you'll email and reach out to. So once you reach out to them, there will probably be a fraction of the schools that you emailed on that list they will actually reply to you. My list was about like 83 schools and I think I got you know, more than probably like 25 replies from all those schools. So that alone should narrow it down a lot. And then as you move along in your process, you'll weed through those more and then you'll be left with quite a few less schools and even the ones that responded that are actually interested and seem willing to offer you a scholarship or at least a spot on the team. And personally for me, it wasn't hard to choose. I mean, I did have probably a dozen schools or so that are pretty interested but then again using those factors you know a couple didn't have my major a couple were on the east coast midwest i didn't want to go that far away from home so i really only had one real option you know i never second guessed my decision even when i made my decision there was no other schools in the back of my mind but for a lot of players a lot of people it's not so simple and easy to choose and actually the reason i'm making this video is because one of my viewers dm'd me and he said you know i have two D3 schools and an AI school I'm trying to choose from. And I tried my best to help him narrow it down, make a decision, he committed. So I was glad I could help him with that. But that just made me think about, you know, I want this to be a full guide of recruiting. So obviously one of the most important steps is the final step of recruiting, choosing where you're gonna go to school. And you wanna be sure about your decision, you don't wanna second guess it. So I wanted to make a video covering this. And I think in the end, it's not super complicated. It just comes down to factors and the importance of those factors to you. So I'm just gonna list off pretty much all the big factors. These aren't in any particular order, and I'll explain them all in just a second. So the factors that should influence your decision of where you're going to school are cost, location, academic reputation, soccer program, what the coaches think your role on the team would be, the size of the school, the division, the facilities like the locker room, the diner, the fields, the dorms, and also the cost of those. And then the coaches, you know, what is the overall team mentality, team attitude? Those should all be important factors, and I recommend just listing out all of those factors and then personally rank them yourself. What's most important? Is it most important of how good the soccer team is, or is it most important to me the degree I get, the education I get? Decide for yourself, rank them all and then compare the schools that you've narrowed down, whether it's two or 10 different schools. Figure out the cost, and for those other factors, that they don't have like a specific number on how good the location is, and you come up with, you know, this is a five-star location, this is a three-star location. Figure out ways to rank and compare the different schools according to those factors. All right, so the first factor I mentioned was cost. So figure out the tuition, how much the dorms and meal plans cost and then books and all the other fees. And also just try to think about the cost of living. If your meal plan isn't adequate for you every day, then you're also gonna have to go buy food at the grocery store and things like that. So while it's easy to just think about tuition, you know, all those other things are gonna add up a lot and that's gonna affect your daily life a lot. And also obviously financial aid, scholarships, athletic and academically, really try to calculate before you commit, you wanna know exactly how much you're gonna to have to pay to go there. Clear that up with your coach, with you know the academics at the school. You wanna know what you're getting academic scholarship wise, what you're getting athletic scholarship wise. D3 doesn't offer athletic scholarships. So if someone ever says you know they got an offer to a D3 school, that just means they got an offer to be on the team. So this is something that should be important to you and you wanna have it calculated beforehand. Another factor is location. So first of all, the campus, is the campus nice? Is it enjoyable to walk around in? You know, and then the town, is it a really big city right in the middle? Is it kind of on the outskirts? Is it in the middle of nowhere? You know, those are things that are really gonna affect your daily life because college, you know, a lot of times, 
after you're done with class, practice, all that stuff, you just wanna hang out, go somewhere to eat, do something. And my school is in a pretty small town, so a lot of times you end up doing the same thing all the time or eating at the same places. And it gets kinda of old, you know, but then again, I don't think I'd wanna be in a huge city with tons of distractions and feel like overwhelmed. So decide how important location is to you. Another thing I highly recommend, I think everyone should do this, is go on as many visits as you can. And also try to stay overnight with someone on the team or something like that. Try to stay overnight on campus and get some time to hang out with the guys because then you'll see more of what the team's like, what the atmosphere around campus is like, and ask the guys on the team questions about, you know, what's the town like here or what's it like on campus. So get a feel of what the town, what the area is like. Next is academic reputation. Um, you know, for the most part, D3 and D1 are the best divisions for academics. NAI is normally a lot more focused on athletics. D2 is also really not known for academics. And obviously not all D1 schools are, but there are quite a few D1 schools. You know, all the Ivy League, Duke, Stanford, all those kind of schools are all D1. And the D3 is mostly private schools, and they also want to be more academic focused, so that's why they don't give out athletic scholarships. So some schools are obviously no-brainers about their very smart school. Um, you know, just about any school in California seems to be a pretty smart school and pretty hard to get into. And then also pay attention to, um, you know, for your major, the program you want to get into, they have a really good program for exercise science or nursing or engineering because there might be some schools that aren't that great in other areas, but there are schools that are a lot more focused on certain majors or that's just what they specialize in. You know, they're not necessarily trade schools, but that's what they're known for. So once you graduate, you want to have a piece of paper that was worth that four years, that was worth all that money you spent. So get a general understanding of what the program for your major is like and what the overall reputation of the school is. And then soccer program. How competitive are they? Are they typically you know, top three in their conference every year? Do they make the NCAA tournament every single year? You know, do they have notable alumni playing pro in higher leagues? And also pay attention to what conference they're playing in. You know, certain conferences are stacked with teams that go to the NCAA tournament every year. Like last year, the ACC was super competitive, probably the best conference in the country, regardless of division for soccer. Now they're a well-funded team. You know, you might get deals on certain brands or, you know, you get a lot of gear, have a lot of nice things. You know, no matter who you are, this should be a big factor is how good the team is. And then going into that, try to get to know the coaches on visits. Try to talk to them if you can. Try to go on the tour with them. You know, try to have quite a few phone calls, understand their mentality, what kind of coach they are. So try to your best to get a feel of what the coach's attitude is, what they're like. And then try to get to know the players on the team. When you're on visits, like I said, try to stay overnight and try to stay overnight with the players on the team. Pick their brains, ask them questions. You know, ask them what the coach is like too. So get their take on what the team's attitude is, what the coach's attitude is. Get a feeling of the division, the conference, the level, and the team overall. Because that should be important to you when making a decision. So next is the school size, which is a lot of times, you know, kind of depending on the division. D1, a lot of those schools, and pretty much almost all of them are over 15,000. D2, you know, I don't think I've seen one under three or 4,000. And then at the most, probably like 20,000 students, something around that range. D3, my school is like 1,500, you know, normally between 1,000 to 4,000, 5,000, something around there. And then NAIA, a lot of NAIAs are schools that like just opened up or just added athletics. I mean, there's two within like an hour of my house that just opened up in the last two or three years. I think both of those are still under 1,000 or 1,500 students. And at my school, the size is a really big factor because I get to know my professors better than I knew any of my teachers in high school. And then also, being a freshman, I've got to know a lot of people way quicker than I ever would have if I was just even at a D2. I mean, my high school is twice as big as my school, and in some ways it kind of sucks. You know, word gets around really fast, everybody knows everybody, but it's also a cool environment, and you feel welcome a lot faster. Whereas, you know, a big D1 or something, you're probably just going to know your teammates, and then you know, branch out and then some of their friends you'll get to meet and it's a lot easier to get office hours in with them things like that a d1 that's really hard to do but some people also like that bigger school feel 
So again, it's up to you how important this is to you. Next is your team role. And I don't want to make this too big of a deal because a lot of times coaches will say, oh yeah, I don't really see you starting until sophomore or junior year. Or, you know, my coach said he thought from what he saw of me, I was in between first team and reserve team. And I did start out playing quite a few games of the reserve team and then sitting the bench for first team, but I ended up starting more than half of the first team games. So don't make this too big of a factor because the coaches in the end really don't know. And even if they tell you, you know, you're not going to be first team, you can just work really hard and prove them wrong. But this should still be a factor because if there's two schools and just about everything is the same, and then the one difference is one school is telling you, yeah, we think you'll start for us next year. The other school is saying, you know, I think you might be a reserve team player or, you know, on the practice squad. Then you should choose a team that's saying, you know, we want you to play and start next year. Next is dorms. This one's really important. Like I said, with costs, figure out how much the dorms are going to cost. And then also when you're on that tour, you should be seeing the dorms. You should be kind of deciding in your head which dorm you want to live in. I mean, being an athlete, you're not going to be in your room all day, but you, know, you want something that can feel like home, doesn't feel too crowded, but also isn't way too expensive. And this should really just go without saying how important that is. And then finally, facilities. Facilities are really important. And when I say this, I mean, you know, like the soccer fields, the locker rooms, gym, the diner, the library, the classrooms, all those things that you're going to spend a lot of time in. You know, you don't want to be too superficial and think, you know, oh, this school has a better locker room, whatever. But again, it's one of those that I think typically should be in the bottom half of your list. But if it's something, you know, almost all the other factors are identical, then this can be one that helps you decide. You know, like the diner, you're going to be in there pretty much every day. You want to know what the food's like. Is it a cool atmosphere in there? Does everyone just kind of sit by themselves? Library, chances are you'll probably do some studying, print stuff out in there. You want to have good resources. The classrooms, you know, the fields, are you just playing on dirt and rocks? Are you playing on, you know, a pretty nice field? Is the atmosphere cool at games? You know, the gym is somewhere you should be going four or five times a week, so you want to you want them to have you know the right resources, things that'll help you get in shape and stay in shape. So those are all things to think about. So if you haven't picked up on it by now, pretty much all these factors, a lot of them you're gonna have to go on visits to see that. And if they are a school that you're serious about, you should have already been on at least one visit there. And you know, there's a local NAI here that gave me a pretty good offer. And I already pretty much knew, I, don't, I didn't really wanna go there, but I still went on a visit just to see, okay, let's see what it's like. You know, and then I got there and it just confirmed, okay, I don't want to, I don't really want to go here. I'm going to cross this off the list. You know, I stayed in touch with them until I committed in case things fell out and I had to have a backup plan, but that just kind of solidified my decision. So visits are super important. I'm going to make a video just on that about um, how to get the most out of school visits. And with this video, like I said, these are all just a bunch of factors and I can't rank them for you or tell you what's most important to you. You need to decide that, but I'd recommend with these schools, make a list first of all, the factors, rank them from most important to least important, and then directly compare them on all these factors, cost, location, size, academic reputation, soccer program, and that should really help you make a decision. It is pretty basic, but still, when you're thinking about committing, it's still easy to just think about the big general things and not about the things that are going to affect your day-to-day -day life on campus at that school. We tend to just think about cost, scholarship offers, how good is the team, when you should be taking the whole picture into consideration. So thank you all for watching. Like and subscribe if you enjoyed. Comment below what your biggest factors were in deciding where to go or if you're still deciding where the things that matter to you the most. And if you have committed somewhere to play already, let me know how you made that decision. You know, this series, Full Guide to College Soccer Recruiting, I'm posting weekly videos to add to this series every weekend. So subscribe and hit the bell to stay notified whenever a new video is released. But thank you guys all again, and I'll see you on the next one.